Hello my dear children. Once again welcome to our physics class. Hope you all are fine over there. In the previous session we had discussed about center of mass and we discussed about the velocity, position coordinate, acceleration and the force acting on the center of mass. Today let's discuss with another concept of this chapter. So let's continue with this chapter system of particles and rotational motion. So today we discuss about vector product. As you know vectors cannot be multiplied just like ordinary numbers. So certain special rules has to be followed for vector multiplication and we have studied one such rule that is dot product. Dot product of two vectors will be a scalar quantity and work done is defined as the dot product of force and displacement. So we had discussed in detail about dot product, its properties, everything in our previous chapter. And in this chapter, let's discuss about another type of vector multiplication that is known as vector product. So what do you mean by vector product? Vector product is also known as cross product. Okay, so uh, dot product or scalar product is known as dot product. Just like that, vector product is also known as cross product. And vector product of two vectors A and B. So let's consider A and B as two vectors. And vector product of two vectors A and B is denoted by A cross B. Okay, just read it as A cross B. Not A into B, it is A cross B. That's why it is known as cross product. A cross B equal to AB sin theta into n cap. So when n cap is also there, listen here, a cross b is equal to a b sin theta into n cap. Okay, so just forget about this equal to c and all those things. a cross b is equal to a b sin theta into n cap. n cap represents unit vector and that unit vector gives the direction of the vector product a cross b. And here theta is the angle between A and B. Okay. Now this vector product is perpendicular to the plane containing A and B. Okay. So if we consider two vectors like this. Let this be our vector A. Let this be our vector B. Then what will be the direction of vector product? Vector product will be perpendicular to both A and B. And which is the direction perpendicular to both A and B? This is the direction. Okay. So the vector product A cross B will be acting along this direction. Which is perpendicular to both A and B. And also vector product of two vectors will be a vector quantity. Okay. Dot product of two vectors is a scalar quantity. But vector product of two vectors is a vector quantity and the direction of that vector or the direction of that vector product is perpendicular to both vectors A and B. Okay, so vector product A cross B is AB sin theta where A is the magnitude of vector A, B is the magnitude of vector B, theta is the angle between A and B, and n cap is the unit vector which points along the direction of vector product A cross B. Okay. Now, how to find out the direction of that vector product? To find out the direction of that vector product, there is a rule. For that, keep your palm in the direction of vector A and curl your fingers from A to B. Then, your thumb will give you the direction of vector product C. So here in this figure you can see this is vector A, this is vector B. And theta is the angle between vector A and B. So what is the direction of vector product A cross B? A cross B. To, in order to find out the direction of A cross B, curl your fingers from A to B keeping your palm in the direction of vector A. So all of you take your right hand and keep your palm in the direction of vector A 
just keep your palm in the direction of vector A on the screen. Then curl your fingers from A to B. Curl your fingers from A to B like this. Just curl your fingers like this from A to B. Then just look at the direction of your thumb. Your thumb will be pointing upwards. Isn't it? It is shown in this figure. Thumb will point upwards. So this thumb itself indicates the direction of vector product A cross B or C. Because here A cross B is denoted by C. That's why it is written C here. C means our vector quantity or vector product A cross B itself. Okay. So in order to obtain the direction of vector product A cross B, just curl your fingers from vector A to B, keeping your palm along the direction of A, then your thumb will give the direction of vector product A cross B. Okay. Now, what are the properties of vector product? This vector product satisfies certain properties. So, which is the first property? A cross B is not equal to B cross A. Do you remember the properties of dot product? Dot product was commutative. A dot B is equal to B dot A. But vector product is not commutative. A cross B is not equal to B cross A. But A cross B is equal to minus of B cross A. Okay, there will be a change in the direction. Then A cross B plus C is A cross B plus A cross C. So vector product is distributive. It obeys the distributive law. Then A cross A is 0. Where 0 is called the null vector. That is having 0 magnitude. So the cross product of two similar vectors is 0. But the dot product of similar vectors was equal to 1. Here cross product of similar vectors is 0. Dot product of similar vector is 1. So that is the difference between dot and vector product. Now i cross j is equal to k. But do you remember i dot i is equal to uh, 1. Uh, at the same time i dot j is equal to 0. But here i cross j is equal to the next unit vector k. Similarly j cross a k is equal to next unit vector i. And k cross i is equal to another unit vector j. So you can remember this in a cyclic order. If you write a i j k in this cyclic order, then you can easily obtain the gross product i cross j is equal to the next vector k. Now k cross i is equal to the next vector uh, that is j. And similarly j cross k, j cross k because i cross j, j cross k, k cross i. It follows in a cyclic order like this. So i cross j is k, j cross k is i and k cross i is j. Okay. And if you uh, move away from the cyclic order, your vector product will be negative. That means i cross j is k, then j cross i will be minus k. Okay. j cross k is i, so k cross j will be minus i. k cross i is j, so i cross k will be equal to minus j. So this is the order and these are some of the properties of vector product. Now, if you write vector in component form, then how can you find out their product, vector product? So let the first vector a be axi plus ayj plus azk and the set be bxi plus byj plus bzk. Then their vector product is given by a cross b is equal to determinant of. Okay, so there is a determinant. So a cross b is equal to determinant. First you must write i, j, k. Cyclic coordinates, unit vectors, i, j, k. After that write the component of first vector. Here first vector is vector a. And the components of first vector are ax, ay, az. Okay, so below i which is pointing along the x direction, write the x component, y component that is ay, below k, write the z component that is az. 
and similarly write the component of second vector that means b so below ax write the x component of b bx below ay write by below az write bz okay so by finding out the determinant of this vector you will get the cross product a cross b how to find out the determinant of this cross product so to find out the determinant first consider the element i cap that is the first element so i cap into and in order to find out the components of i cap in the cross product or in the determinant just delete the rows and column containing i cap so if you delete the row and column containing i cap you will get see this is the row and this is the uh, sorry this is the column and row containing i cap so when you delete it you will get a y a z b y b z then just take the cross uh, just cross multiply the components so whenever you take the cross multiply the components you will get a y b z minus b y a z so you can write i cap into a y b z minus b y a z okay a y b z minus b y a z okay then which is the next component next component is j cap so in order to find out j cap you can must write minus j cap because the sign convention is like this this is plus this is minus and this is plus alternatively we, we will take plus minus plus so minus j cap into then in order to find out the components of j cap just delete the column and row containing j cap then which are the components ax az bx bz so we can write ax bz minus bx az just cross multiply like this when you cross multiply you will get ax into bz minus bx into az okay so ax into bz minus bx into az now the next component is k cap so plus k cap into to find out the component of k cap delete the column and row containing k cap then we are left with ax ay bx by take the cross multiplication so ax by minus bx ay ax by minus bx ay okay so this is the way to find out the determinant of a cross b or to find out the determinant of any vector okay so this is the way to determine the determinant of a cross product now there is an example how will you calculate the cross product between vector a is equal to 3 minus 3 1 and vector b is equal to 4 9 2 okay so here um, first you must write the components which are the components i j k that means unit vectors first you must write the unit vectors i j k then write the components of a vector a which is the first vector so 3 minus 3 1 components of b 4 9 2 then find out the determinant as i mentioned in the previous slide so you will get this result just try it and just try to find out the vector product okay next we will discuss about angular velocity and its relation with linear velocity so we had already discussed about the relationship between angular velocity omega and linear velocity v in the previous chapters that means uh, the chapter motion in a plane okay there we discussed that the angular velocity omega and linear velocity v is related by an equation isn't it so here r is a radius vector omega is a vector so both are vectors and actually this v linear velocity v is the cross product of two vectors r and omega there we didn't study about the cross product so we didn't mention the cross product at all but now we know the cross product so the uh, linear velocity v is actually defined as the cross product of angular velocity uh, omega sorry it is not v cross sorry it is not r cross omega it is 
omega cross r okay so the linear velocity v is equal to omega cross r that is linear velocity is defined as the cross product of omega and radius vector r so here we can see every particle of a rotating body moves in a circle you know that so whenever a body rotates all particles in that body moves in a circular path so angular displacement of a given particle about its center in unit time is defined as angular velocity what is angular velocity we had already studied about angular velocity omega we had studied that angular velocity omega is equal to delta theta that is angular displacement by time or it is equal to d theta by dt isn't it that is angular velocity then average angular velocity is delta theta by delta t instantaneous angular velocity is d theta by dt and v is equal to omega r where v is the linear velocity of the particle moving in a circle of radius r okay then all particles or, or sorry all parts of a moving body have the same angular velocity in pure rotational motion so whenever a body executes pure rotational motion all particles of that body have the same angular velocity at the same time when a body executes a pure translatory motion all particles of that body have the same linear velocity also okay now angular velocity omega is a vector quantity so if it is a vector quantity it must possess some direction so what is the direction of omega in order to find out the direction of omega you must apply a rule this is the rule if you curl your fingers of right hand in the sense of rotation thumb will give the direction of angular velocity okay so here consider this figure here so curl your fingers of right hand in the sense of rotation then thumb will give the direction of angular velocity so in this figure when you curl your fingers in the direction of this arrow when you curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of this arrow your thumb will point along this direction so this will be the direction of angular velocity but here the sense of rotation has been reversed so whenever you curl your fingers in the direction of this arrow your thumb will be pointing along this direction so this will be the direction of angular velocity omega okay so to find out the direction of angular velocity you must apply this rule now what is angular acceleration angular acceleration is denoted by alpha actually this is not a alpha is equal to d omega by dt for d omega is the velocity angular velocity and dt is the time as you know linear acceleration a is equal to change in velocity by time linear velocity by time so similarly angular acceleration alpha is equal to angular velocity dt by or oh sorry angular velocity d omega by time okay so what is angular acceleration angular acceleration is given by the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time linear acceleration is rate of change of linear velocity angular acceleration is rate of change of angular velocity okay so our angular velocity omega is d theta by dt angular acceleration alpha is d omega by dt